Hey guys, this is Ix Rollin' Ix with the Rollout Reviews, and Bionicle G2 was cancelled after only two years. Which is a shame, but I think the biggest disappointment of all is the fact that, from the very beginning, we were promised three years, three virtues, and three legendary masks. In the end, we only saw two of these legendary masks, the Mask of Creation and the Mask of Control, and unfortunately, the official Mask of Ultimate Power will very, very likely never see production. That said, LEGO does work several years in advance, and for one reason or another, they did design and produce a prototype for the Mask of Ultimate Power. Whether that was for a third year that never happened, or simply in preparation for the conclusion of the Journey to One, I don't know. But whatever the case, they 3D printed and painted the design, and then featured it on several models used as examples in a Build Your Own Makuta contest seen at the end of the series. Because of all of this, we got tons of reference material for this mask. Not only did we see it in the Journey to One, but we also saw a ton of pictures of the prototype mask itself from many different angles, which were just invaluable. Then, of course, this being the age of the internet and the age of rapid fabrication, an individual on the TTV forums was able to collaborate with the community in designing a 3D model of the Mask of Ultimate Power. They then uploaded it to Shapeways and allowed us to print it for ourselves. So despite all odds, we can add the Forbidden Mask, the mask that was never meant to be forged, to our Bionicle G2 collection. Now, this was designed by a guy who goes by the name of Cyberhand on the TTV forums. However, he's called Slithen Perrier on Shapeways itself. I cannot thank him enough for the effort he put into this design, and there will be links in the description to go to the pages on Shapeways for both of the Masks of Ultimate Power that he has uploaded there. Now, this is my first ever Shapeways order, so I figured let's unbox it and see what we get. This will be sort of a way for you to kind of understand how these will arrive if you order them for yourself. I have removed these shipping labels so that nobody sends me creepy voodoo totems or severed horse heads to my address, but here is the rest of the box. It is a little bit dented on the corners here, but I assume that uh, the items inside are well protected. Like how it says, oops, upside down there. It also says, made in the future, made for you. So that is very cool. Anyway, let's release the mask or masks. I'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, this is exciting. Okay, let me see what this is. <laughs> let me read that. We got bubble wrap inside. And first, let's take a look at the larger one. Because you see, Slithen Perrier, Cyberhand himself, uh, actually designed two masks of ultimate power in two different sizes. We have a Titan scale one and a Villager scale one. The Villager scale is supposed to be the size it was when he forged the mask, and then this Titan scale one is how it looks when he puts it on and grows to size. So, here, that is... Let's see if I can't get a close-up on this. Get the lights in closer, too. Now this is a 3D printed design, so it's going to be a little bit rough around the edges, but that's, that's perfectly fine, because 
I don't know, at least for the Titan scale one, I see this as the mask that Makuta wore in the Shadow Realm, which I believe to be like a forgery of the original mask made with crude materials. So the fact that it's a little bit rough around the edges sort of makes sense to me. Looks very, very good. Can't really get super close on the details without a macro lens, but we'll see what I can do about that here in just a little bit. But it's a little bit sparkly, actually. This is printed in the material black, strong, and flexible. Unpolished, because Shapeways cannot polish anything that isn't white, I don't believe, or metal. Yes, there is that. So, of course, it attaches to a standard bionicle head here, and let's see how it does that. Pretty well, actually. Slightly loose, but most G2 masks are. You can see it extends beyond the jaw just because of how large the mask is, and... The pop-off feature does not actually work just because of how it's designed up top here, but I don't think the prototype that LEGO made had that functionality either. So it's not like that is terribly inaccurate. Uh, it's very difficult to see the eyes through there, but it is possible. Fortunately, I don't think it's very possible from the direct front. Maybe somebody who's skilled at painting can, like, put red edges to make those eyes pop or something like that. But regardless, very, very cool. I also want to do a comparison here with a couple of official LEGO colors. Here it is next to the official black color that LEGO uses, and uh, it is a fair bit lighter. It doesn't quite match, so you might want to sand this and paint it for yourself if you care about that sort of thing. Now, for size, here is the Titan Scale Mask of Ultimate Power next to the Mask of Creation. Fair bit taller, fair bit wider, but you can just see proportionally it's a whole lot bigger, of course. It's a much different scale. And then, just for kicks, here it is next to Makuta's other mask, the Mask of Control. Just for experimentation purposes, I did decide to get this in a different material. The other black material they have available at the moment, which is black acrylic. And I believe it's going to be a little bit more rubbery, but uh, we will find out here. There is this. Um, yeah. I think it's a, a slightly softer material. It kind of has a strange texture to it, like... Like there's a, like a, a, a brighter colored film over the top of it. But it's basically the same 3D model, just squished down and made smaller. So that it's more appropriate on uh, villager sized characters. But yeah, it almost looks like 3D shaded, if I'm honest. Which is kind of cool in a way. Uh, to me, it almost resembles actually like, like a shroud of shadow enveloping the mask so that like maybe this is the, uh, you know, the forgery that he made in the Shadow Realm. And this is that original golden mask just being worn and being enveloped with a, a shroud or something like that, as it was in the Journey to One when Makuta first put it on. Anyway. Let's see how this fits on the villager head. Little more snug, actually. Again, it extends below the jaw there. That actually looks really good. Really like that. I wasn't sure, but it looks pretty good. Again, doesn't match the black that Lego uses at all. But, uh, oh well. <laughs> Again, the, uh, the pop-off feature doesn't really work quite that well. Just kind of lifts the mask up, but that is about it. Again, it's a little more snug on the head. I don't know if it's going to, like, damage anything, but the material is a whole lot softer. If I rub it like this, it's, it's almost a little rubbery 
So, um, that's interesting. I mean, it's still kind of like a solid plastic, but it's noticeably less solid than the larger mask. And then here it is compared to the Mask of Creation. It's actually about the exact same height. So I think it actually fits in scale with the other two legendary masks very well. If you just want the Mask of Ultimate Power for a pedestal, I think this is the one to get, maybe. And then here it is with the Mask of Control. Actually, another quick comparison that came to mind was with the G1 Kraken, the Mask of Shadows, Makuda's original mask. Because if you recall correctly, this is a bit of a lighter or softer black color than the jet black of CCBS. So, here this is with the Titan Scale mask in black, strong, and flexible. And, of course, the texture is a bit different, so maybe it's just reflecting light differently, but surprisingly, it seems a little darker than the G1 mask, which is kind of interesting. Let's flip this around and actually do a comparison of the two proper faces. Yeah. I will say, I do like the design of the Mask of Ultimate Power quite a bit. But anyway, let's show it off with the smaller version, the acrylic mask. And again, the texture here makes it a little difficult to tell, but I still don't think they're exact. Again, maybe this is a little darker. Here are the three legendary masks, a little bit how they were seen at the end of the 2014 legend video displayed on pedestals. And I think as far as the trifecta display goes, it looks pretty right as far as size and style. It fits with the other two masks pretty well. Of course, it isn't the same color. I had thought about getting a white polished version of this smaller mask, sanding it down a little, and trying to paint it myself in a similar gold color as these two, but I figured in the end that I likely wouldn't be able to find a gold color that was 100% exact. And if it couldn't be exact, if it couldn't match the other two perfectly, then I might as well go for the more contrasty route and settle with black. But now that I have it in hand, I almost want to attempt that paint job again. Hmm, we'll see. These masks aren't the cheapest things in the world to print. I'm still deciding. However, let's set these off to the side and actually do a quick comparison with the larger mask and the source material. Because as I've had some time to take a look at this mask off camera, I did notice a couple of inaccuracies. Now, these were inaccuracies that I sort of suspected before I purchased it, but I did want to bring them to attention here. So from the front, I think it actually looks pretty good. Of course, I could see like the eye shapes aren't exact, in fact, they're a little bit bigger, and I almost prefer that, actually, especially since his eyes could emote in the Journey to One, they could widen, so that's not too terribly inaccurate. Uh, there is a little bit more space in the jaw section here, in those gaps, but uh, it's not too terrible, just not... 100% perfect. However, I think most of the inaccuracies are seen from the side. First, you can see that the top of the, the, I don't know, the spires, the crest there, kind of tapers, and that's not quite present here. You can also see that I think the, like, the jaw beams here don't sit quite as far back as they should. The nose shape isn't, uh, as defined there. And then the jaw, I think, has a few inaccuracies as well, as far as the shape goes, and uh, as far as how these little spikes on the bottom stick out. And all of those inaccuracies are present on the smaller version as well, because they're derived from the same model. Uh, there it is in the show. It's a little bit difficult to see just because of the lighting of the Shadow Realm, go figure, and then uh, here it is 
up in the air after Akimu knocks it off Makuta's face, and again, the bottom of the jaw. Slightly inaccurate, doesn't have quite as much bulk. I think I have one more shot of the mask from the back here, and actually on that level I think it's pretty accurate. Another thing I want to mention is that the mask is actually a little bit difficult to get onto a pedestal. You can see that I've removed the uh, the gray support beam in there, and that's because the plastic that these are made out of doesn't have nearly as much give as the uh, the ABS hybrid blend that LEGO uses. So you kind of have to squeeze these two bits together a little bit, and then put the mask on, and then kind of pull them apart to secure it in place. If you have a, a pin in there, and if you have that support beam in there, it's just, it's too tight of a fit, and you're gonna risk damaging these beams here. But uh, otherwise, I think once you have it on the pedestal, it looks pretty good. Now, as promised, before I show the mask being worn, I did slap on a macro lens that you can get a better feel for the texture of these masks. Here is the Titan scale version in black, strong, and flexible. Again, a little sparkly, definitely rough around the edges. But if you interpret it as the forgery he wore in the Shadow Realm. Once again, I don't think that's too much of a problem. Of course, you could probably sand this and polish it yourself if you're so inclined, and then maybe paint it if you wanted to. All in all, though, I'm pretty satisfied with that even on its own. On to the villager scale mask in black acrylic. Once again, I feel it's almost like 3D cell shaded with that lighter texture over it. It's definitely unique and different. Probably not going to work for everybody, but surprisingly, I sort of like it. I mean, I might prefer something a little bit cleaner. But all in all, again, fairly satisfied. And if I do end up getting a white polished version of this size mask, I will make a video on that. So you can see how that turns out as well. But there are the textures of the masks. So first we're going to go with a slightly inappropriate figure here. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the mask would look like on a Toa-sized build before we take a look at it on the Makudas. So here is Tahu, and let's start with the smaller mask. Again, this mask definitely has a bit of a chin, so let's lift the head up and place that on here. Again, kind of a snug fit on this one, but uh, yeah, there you go. Don't think it's too terribly proportioned, that one. Looks all right. I mean, obviously it looks a little wrong on Tahu here, but as a mask, it looks fine. Now, let's see if we can get this off here and put on the Titan scale version. And now <laughs> he looks uh, a little bit like a bobblehead, but oh well. Here is the villager scale mask being held by a mask maker Makuta mock that I built to go alongside the mask maker size to from 2015. I may show off this little creation in its own video at some point in the future, but for right now, here he is presenting his prized creation 
I was a little bit intimidated to have him hold it traditionally with the two little prongs here around the axle holes, but to my surprise, it actually fits pretty well over his hand without doing that, which is kind of good because I feel like it would damage it otherwise. But anyway, let's pull off the Mask of Control and have him go insane with power, taking over the capital city. Now, not a whole lot of room uh, between the chin of the head and his chest piece here, so kind of have to raise his head up a little bit, but the smaller version of the mask actually looks pretty good. I think that's fairly well proportioned, or at least not any less proportioned than the Mask of Creation is on Akimu. And yeah, I do sort of like that. But for fun, let's try the, uh, the Titan Scaled Mask, if we can even fit it on. I'm not sure if there's enough room. <laughs> uh, just barely. There is Chibi Makuta. Just a, a little bit adorable. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for. Let's take a look at the mask on the official Shadow Titan Combiner model. This was designed by LEGO and sent to Volta to be used as reference material for modeling Makuta into the Journey to One. This is as close to an official G2 Makuta set that we are going to get. Unfortunately, LEGO did not provide us with any detailed instructions on the thing. Instead, they just told us which seven sets make it up, and then gave us a few helpful, I will admit, pictures that deconstructed the model, showed us the skeleton, and a couple of the more intricate armor pieces. But that's really it. I had to analyze those pictures by duplicates of the seven sets myself, and then build it on my own. It was difficult, but it was especially worth it, because this guy is huge and impressive, and I absolutely love it. I will be doing a more dedicated, in-depth showcase of this model at some point in the future, so stay tuned for that. But right now, we're just going to be giving him his more appropriate mask. The mask of ultimate power, finally. So, let's first take a look at him with the smaller variant of the mask, just for fun. It doesn't look terrible, but it's kind of tiny and a little bit out of place, of course. Really, any standard size mask looks super small on this guy, because he's just so huge. Of course, that is why Cyberhand designed the Titan Scale version of the mask, so let's swap this out for that. And there he is. JTO Makuta at last. Now, I will say that the black version of the mask sort of does blend into his armor a little bit. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the light piping doesn't really shine through the eyes very well. You will notice in one of the pictures I showed earlier that uh, another prototype piece that LEGO made was a completely trans-orange headpiece, and maybe that would have shown through a whole lot better. Of course, we probably won't be getting that piece either, so we're just going to have to deal with this. Of course, you could paint it uh, either just around the eyes, or you could paint the entire thing gold to make it pop a little bit more, but... I think as is, this is sort of how Makuta showed up in the Journey to One, so I'm pretty content with it. Now I will say, looking at some reference pictures here, let me get that a little bit more visible, there you go. Uh, this mask is perhaps a little bit bigger than it should be, even. Uh, like, he made it bigger for the Titan Scale Makuta, but he might have gone just a little bit overboard. Here is the official model wearing the official prototype mask. And uh, if I can get in focus, there we go. Uh, I don't know. I think this mask is just a, a wee bit too big. But honestly, I don't have a problem with that. Because I always felt in these pictures this mask was maybe, well, big, a little small. And I think the size that this mask has going for it is 
entirely appropriate. Like, this guy looks really, really well proportioned, although maybe you need to see his whole body for that. I wanted to pull the camera back as far as possible so you could see as much of this guy's body on camera at once. I wanted to give you a sense of how this mask stacks up with his entirety. Well, turns out that even my larger filming setup is a wee bit too small for how massive this guy is. To do that, I sort of have to go a bit behind the scenes. But anyway, there he is with the Titan Scale Mask of Ultimate Power. I think it looks great, especially so in person, and I suppose that's really all you need to know. Now, is it perfect? Not really. It has several inaccuracies, both in size and shape, for better or worse, and if you're looking for a 100% perfect replica of LEGO's prototype mask, then this probably isn't it. That said, it is a fine attempt, and a very welcome addition to my collection, and for those who just can't wait on perfection to eventually roll around, I think this is a good enough version of the mask worthy for completing your G2 Makuta, at least. Now, if someone else does design a better, more accurate Mask of Ultimate Power at some point, I'll be honest, this will likely be replaced on my Makuta. And hopefully by then, Shapeway's new Acrylate material will be ready for consumer printing, so we can see how that turns out as well. In a perfect world, at the very least, LEGO might have been able to release, like, the actual 3D model that the design team used to print their own mask, but I imagine there's some legal mumbo-jumbo preventing them from doing anything like that in reality. But truthfully, though, I think in a way, the community coming together to create this mask for themselves is kind of fitting. It's parallel to the ambitions of Makuta in the story, but it's also a symbol of our dedication as a fan base. In the time before time, we rode that hype train all the way through the launch of G2, and when LEGO abruptly pulled that away from us, we did not take no for an answer. They didn't allow us ultimate power, so we forged our own. And when all is said and done, I'm not sure I'd want it any other way. Once again, I have to thank everyone involved. My fellow Bionicle fans, LEGO, Shapeways, and Cyberhand especially, for making something like this possible. And until next time, this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.